People are great at keeping secrets, especially when they're secrets like murder. I just stood on the corner and I screamed to the top of my lungs. No parent should ever bury their child. This killer is still out there. He's a murderer. He's walking around Denver just as though he haven't done anything. I ain't no snitch, but what happened to Rodney Tate? In the heart of Denver, on a chilling April night in 2002, the city's tranquil streets bore witness to a tragedy that would haunt the Tate family for years to come. Rodney Tate, a promising 20-year-old with dreams in his eyes, met his untimely demise in a hail of bullets meant for another. The echoes of that fateful night still reverberate in the corners of the city as his killers remain at large evading justice like ghosts in the night. This concerns Denver Police case number 2002-18178, the cold case homicide that happened on April 20th of 2002, and the victim being a Rodney Tate. Rodney was shot several times. He was pronounced deceased on scene. Rodney was a big guy. He was tall, like he had his daddy's height. He was 6'3", uh, 265 pounds, and I always called him my teddy bear. You know how you have your sibling rivalries. We fought, we, we fight, and he'd follow me. Like, stop following me. We just got into a fight, but, you know, we still had fun. Little Rodney, was, he, was very, he was very generous. He wasn't no fighter or nothing. He was a you know, a very given guy, you know, he was just growing up, just, just growing, growing up, up that's all, just growing up, just growing up in the neighborhood. Rodney Tate wasn't a name synonymous with trouble. He was a young man filled with aspirations, eager to carve his path in the world. But fate had other plans for him. On that ill-fated night, Rodney found himself in the passenger seat of his friend Thomas Abrams' SUV innocently cruising along Martin Luther King Boulevard. As they navigated the dimly lit streets, a silver 2002 Cadillac emerged from the shadows, tailing them with ominous intent. In a matter of seconds, the tranquility shattered as gunfire erupted from the Cadillac, tearing through the night air with deadly precision. The SUV careened off the road, crashing at the intersection of MLK and Newport Street. In the chaos that ensued, Thomas Abram was wounded, but Rodney Tate paid the ultimate price. His life extinguished before he could realize his full potential. On April 20, 2002, just prior to 6.20 at night, Rodney Tate was a passenger in a Chevy Blazer driving eastbound here on MLK. At approximately Niagara, the suspect vehicle pulls up alongside the victim's car and begins firing shots into the victim's car. The shooting continues as the victim's car is going eastbound. The victim's car takes a, a left turn in between this tree and the evergreen, cutting northbound. It's gonna cut across MLK to the second house here on the left. This is where the first 911 call comes in of the shooting and where responding officers and paramedics find the victim deceased in the car and the other victim of the shooting. He had just left my house on that particular day. I was like, hey, see you, see you later, nephew, you know, and you're just another typical, you know, uh, goodbyes, you know. At 5.30, I got a call, and uh, she told me Rodney's been shot. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, it, it can't be. He, he just pulled out my alley. I don't even think I put shoes on. We were out of there so fast. When I got there and I, I saw the yellow tape, I knew when I saw the yellow tape, someone's life had been taken. And I was hoping that it wasn't Rodney's life. And um, as it continued on throughout the night, couldn't find out that it was Rodney. Life that had gotten taken. That was, that was, he was still sitting in the truck 
when I got there, when I went to go up to the truck, they wouldn't let me go up to the truck, so. So that was a day his life was taken. For Rodney's grieving family, the agony of loss was compounded by the cruel mystery surrounding his death. Carolyn Tate, Rodney's mother, refused to accept that her son was merely collateral damage. She adamantly believed that Rodney was an unwitting victim, caught in the crossfire of someone else's vendetta. Denver police detective Joseph Delmonico echoed Carolyn's sentiments, emphasizing the urgency of unraveling the truth behind Rodney's murder. With the investigation at a standstill, Delmonico appealed to the public for assistance, urging anyone with information to come forward. But in a city where silence often cloaks the truth, uncovering the identity of Rodney's killers proved to be a daunting task. The shadows cast by Rodney's unresolved murder stretched far and wide, hinting at the possibility of gang involvement. But amidst the whispers of speculation and conjecture, one fact remained indisputable. Someone out there knew the identity of Rodney's killers. Further investigation led detectives to understand that there was a altercation approximately 15 minutes to 30 minutes prior to the shooting at 34th and Colorado. Uh, two groups, the victim's vehicle and the suspect's vehicle, were involved in an altercation at the McDonald's. There was a uh, verbal altercation, there was no uh, description of any weapons displayed, or a physical altercation of any sort. You're here, one minute next to me, you're gone. So uh, I would say to anyone that knows anything about Rodney Tate's murder, to please come forward, say something, because you never know when it could happen to your family. You know, nothing's gonna bring him back, but you know, somebody needs to pay for it. There are people out there on this case in Rodney Tate's murder, who have seen, who have heard things that have not come forward. I plead with the communities that are affected by this violence, if you have information, please come forward. Please call Crime Stoppers. I don't ever want to forget, not ever, as long as I live. As the years passed by, Rodney Tate's memory lingered like a specter in the annals of Denver's criminal history, a poignant reminder of justice denied. The streets that once bore witness to his tragic end remained silent, concealing the secrets of that fateful night within their depths. But for those who loved Rodney Tate, the passage of time did little to assuage their grief or quell their burning desire for closure. They clung to the hope that one day, the shadows would part revealing the faces of those responsible for snuffing out Rodney's light. To this day, Rodney Tate's murder remains unsolved, a cold case that continues to haunt the corridors of law enforcement and the hearts of those who knew him. But amidst the darkness that shrouds his memory, there lingers a glimmer of hope that one day, justice will prevail and Rodney Tate will finally rest in peace. I ain't no snitch, but if you have information about this murder, Contact Crime Stoppers at 72091 37867. You may be eligible for a cash reward.